You might think this hip young crowd is gearing up for a concert. Here's your name tag. Or to meet a hot YouTube star. But guess again. These folks are all about changing the world at the first ever Teen Vogue Summit. And I'm passionate about becoming president in 2044. It's a gathering of game changers. It's amazing. It's so yeah. inspirational. From CEOs. When you give, you really receive so much more. Um, you, know, you feel that you're helping someone, and you are. To celebrities. It's such a powerful movement happening with women. I didn't know what was going on in the world. I didn't know that there was racism. I thought just we all loved each other. To ordinary teens fighting for social justice. I'm really excited to meet like-minded women who are really passionate about making a difference. Like 19-year-old Nadia Okamoto, a Harvard sophomore who's also a warrior in the fight for women's health rights. Regardless of your socioeconomic status or your background, um, I think every human deserves to feel clean, capable, and confident to discover and reach their full potential. 19-year-old Hunter Schaefer fought against North Carolina's bathroom bill. I joined the lawsuit as a plaintiff along with other young trans people to kind of represent who was being affected by the bill. Teen Vogue is forming and to be this kind of powerhouse incubator um, that takes young activists and puts them in front of other young people and says you can do this too. Social activism may be the last thing some would expect from a fashion magazine like Teen Vogue. Over the years, we've realized that our mission was really to become more focused on making this an inclusive community that speaks to every kind of young person. Once a junior fashion bible geared toward brand conscious teens, Teen Vogue is evolving seriously on issues ranging from immigration, the Muslim ban, and climate change, even taking on President Trump. Teen Vogue has been changing the narrative um, and pushing the envelope and covering news and politics um, and social justice issues for, I'd say, the last year and a half to two years. Teen Vogue's shift to social activism comes at a time when female empowerment is at an all-time high. It's meant huge growth for the brand, garnering 10 million monthly page views and 12 million social media followers. Most recently, the digital magazine weighed in on the Me Too movement. Actress Ashley Judd making a video column about her experience. He had a reputation. Let's put it that way. He just really had a reputation. And giving advice to young girls. If it feels wrong, it is wrong. Judd's now one of more than 300 women in Hollywood, leading the hashtag Time's Up initiative to fight sexual harassment and gender disparity. The initiative raising more than $14 million for working class women to seek justice. How many creators do we have in here? Wow. Yes. I love, I love you, girl. 31-year-old Elaine Welteroth is getting a lot of the credit for Teen Vogue's success as the magazine's youngest and first ever black editor-in-chief. Finish this sentence for me. Teen Vogue is a movement. It has become this community of civic-minded, really socially conscious, politically active, curious, ambitious young people who crave the truth, um, who aren't afraid to speak truth. And I think we speak to a certain mindset. And it's about, you know, inspiring people who are progressive thinkers, who want to see change. And so that could mean a 59-year-old white man. It could mean Dan Rather, who retweets us all the time. Dan Rather retweets Teen Vogue? Dan Rather retweets Teen Vogue. Ooh, this, this is where the magic happens. Ooh. We have a of course, uh -huh. it's still, really great. I like these, a yeah. fashion magazine. A little bit like the Devil Wears Prada, you know, with all the racks and racks <laughs> but of I, clothes. I promise that I'm not the devil. I may wear Prada every once in a while. <laughs> and Teen Vogue remains a destination for young women looking for advice on health, beauty, and sex. But some question whether it could be too edgy after this racy column. You've talked about all kinds of hot button issues. Do you ever fear that you're going a little too far? We don't. I think that Teen Vogue is here to push the envelope uh, as truth tellers. We are here to be a resource to an audience that may not get this information anywhere else. In a sense, Teen Vogue has seized the moment, tapping into what matters to Generation Z, post-millennials who are less selfie-driven on social media and more civic-minded. What are you all looking forward to most? Hillary, 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 Hillary. Hillary.
I'm so excited. Yeah. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton guest edited the magazine's latest issue and headline that summit. If you look at what just happened in the Virginia elections, the turnout of young voters made a huge difference. You talk about a lot of different issues, activism, uh, feminism. Um, does that put Teen Vogue in the column of being a liberal magazine? We don't see ourselves as liberal or conservative. We consider ourselves an outlet that addresses the issues that matter the most to our audience. Would you feature a writer who is uh, a, a pro-Trump supporter who wants to give a young person's viewpoint of that? We have online. We absolutely have. But it's the blunt political commentary criticizing President Trump, suggesting that he manipulated the American electorate that's gotten the most notice, even by the likes of Fox News. I'm trying to get to what you're writing about Trump, taking have... a break from the thigh-high boots, and ask what you mean about him committing psychological abuse on you. A and woman are you okay? can love Ariana Grande and her thigh-high boots <laughs> okay, and yeah. still I'm discuss just letting you know that I read politics. you in Teen Vogue I, as of today. And there, those things are not mutually exclusive. The interesting thing about the, the Trump is gaslighting America piece is that tonally it was so sharp. It was so captured what so many people were thinking. And I don't think that people expected that kind of journalism to come from a place like Teen Vogue. Recently, Teen Vogue announced that it's folding its quarterly print edition, focusing on its digital brand, led by Philip Picardi leading some to speculate that Elaine Walteroff may soon be invigorating What's up, everybody? Another Condé Nast publication. This is so surreal. Back at the Teen Vogue Summit. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm from Seattle, and I'm passionate about being aware of mental illness. These young leaders are making newfound friends. I'm also Riley, and I'm also from Seattle. <laughs> I'm interested in women in business and changing the world all part of a generation striving to make a difference. Teen Vogue is so much more than just a magazine. It's so much more than just a website. It's so much more than social. It's really about the audience. And so we're going to continue to innovate and continue to find new ways of reaching this audience in meaningful ways. For Nightline, I'm Deborah Roberts in New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.